interaction, questions. InshaAllah for all those asking for du'a, InshaAllah we're praying for you, we go through all the comments. Uh, keep in touch with help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah give support, participate, volunteer everything that you can to keep the, the, the tariqah and the relationship with the tariqah inshaAllah and the way of the tariqah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Um Is Shaykh Abdul Abbas Al Khidr from the Naqshbandi Golden Chain the same Khidr that is mentioned in Surat Kaf who met Prophet Musa? Walaykum As Salaam Yes Sayyidina Abbas Khidr is the same Sayyidina Khidr in, in Holy Qur'an who met Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salaam and that's what we've talked many times about that reality and how Naqshbandiya holds that reality as the inheritance within the chain. Many talk about the reality and ask for support of Sayyidina Abbas Qadr salam but in the chain of Naqshbandiya he's actually in the chain that whatever he's receiving he's sending to the shaykhs of the tariqah. And so they have a very strong relationship with Sayyidina Abbas Qadr salam and, and the realities of uh, interdimension. So the one whom teaches from the world of form to malakut is the interdimensional reality that Sayyidina Abbas Khidr must come to convey the knowledges and the realities to reach to that. But that's between the shaykhs and not the student but is a essential support in the tariqah and the, and the, the fires of the knowledges and powers that are coming to the tariqah and to the shaykhs to reach to the students inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Sayyidi mentioned holding Naqshbandi zikr with reference to khalwa in the presence of Grand Shaykh Dagestani, would contributions to the mawlid also be acceptable? Mentioned ho holding what? Uh, reference to the khalwa in the presence of Grand Shaykh, a Naqshbandi mawlid? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was the whole concept that uh, to to partake in the blessings, the shaykh knows that secret so he makes all the events based on mawlid. And this broadcast now its intention is always Milad al Nabi, that's why the thumbnail, that's why our du'as at the beginning are, Ya Rabbi we're making intention for Milad al Nabi and in our heart asking and completing what Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani Siru has asked of the shaykhs and the students is make a mawlid with my, with my name as an intention and as a result of that anyone whom is supporting it, attending it, participating in it, has anything to do with it, sends it, propagates it, then is receiving that light and that blessing in which Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultanul Awliya promised that you would uh, receive the benefit of nine years of seclusion in my presence. So they have immense blessings, immense lights of which the people have really no understanding of what Allah has given to these souls. And these are ancient realities that in the last days Allah would send those realities onto earth. So for Malakut just imagine all of the realities of, of the heavens, Allah then programmed when these blessed souls would arrive onto earth and the role that they would play for the completion of the cycle of this dunya. So these are immensely powerful souls and have an immense reality and they carry a, a tremendous amount of Divinely knowledges because of the proximity of their soul and where Allah from what he created of the Muhammadan haqqaiq and where he brought that light of that soul onto this earth which was created first. So that's why the shaykhs then are encouraging people support, participate, share it, do something, anything so that you share in its reward. So when people have a good stock and they want to call everybody up, I have this stock it's about to go really big and everybody goes around calling and they're all so happy. And that's for dunya and Allah asks in Holy Qur'an and, and warns for us in Holy Qur'an that 
If you partake in a good thing you share in its blessing and if you partake in a bad thing you will share in its punishments. But unfortunately everybody shares in the bad things because they you know share whatever bad things that are going around but only I'll come into our lives to promote, no, no share the good things. That these things that have immense reality, immense returns, immense fires, mushkil gusha means they take away many difficulties that people don't even know what was coming to them of difficulties and by means of turning on the mawlid, by means of participating in the mawlid, by means of supporting the mawlid Allah took many difficulties away. And that's just dunya, when, you, when people are only asking, you know when they go to the king of all creation and they say, ah, what do you want? What do you want? I'm going to ask you for your du'a, what do you want? And everybody lining up making a du'a and they go to the king and they say, I want hay. And the king said, what? said, I want hay. He said, you came all the way here to ask for hay? Yeah, hay for my horses. And Mawlana Shaykh would teach that analogy that, you know, people are coming to these realities of, of, of creation and they're asking for the worst of things. They're only asking for the dunya, get my business to be money, my, my kids to go to school, uh, this dunya, that dunya, whatever you can think of variations of dunya, that's all people are asking. And that's all they want to see as a proof that, oh I got more money when I, when I donated to these people or many difficulties they stopped when I, when I participated with their zikrs. But that's all had the dunya. But when they come with intention of, of I want the heavens Ya Rabbi. That as a result of my participation grant me the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad grant my soul to be dressed by these lights, grant me to be in the association of these awliyaullah and they begin to have dreams that they're with them, they're sitting being visited by them, that's something very big. When you're dreaming that your shaykhs are all coming and visiting and you're visiting here and you're seeing there, they're showing you, yes you're in our association by means of your participation. Not by means of your cleverness, by means of your good efforts, your good actions, your love and your muhabbat, they show you now that you're in their diwan, you're in their associations, you're in their nazar and in their presence. And that's the reality. The dunya part relief, that's fantastic, that's a byproduct. But the real reality is that which is eternal and given to your soul and these stations and visitations and presences and all of these uh, fires and energies that are opening, those are for all of eternity. These are for all the lights, every hasanat that Allah dresses the servant can never be taken away, can never be taken away except by one action. But your badness can increase as much as you want, your badness increase as much as you want but it never takes away the light that Allah has given to the servant. So it means with all these hasanats, all these goodness, all these gifts Allah is dressing upon the soul. That's why we try to take them as much as possible these blessings, these lights because Yawmat al-Qiyamah, Yawm al-Mashar when Allah want to dress then these lights begin to glow and the reality of the shaykhs begin to glow and whom they are and what they represent and what realities they represent. Then the student will know with what they have been dressed is the only way to lose that light is by backbiting. So when you backbite Allah will take that hasanat and that goodness, that light that you achieved and begin to give it to that person whom you had backbitten and talked or slandered. If it's true it's backbiting, if, if it's true it's slandering which is more severe and if it wasn't, no if it's true it was backbiting <laughs> and if it wasn't true and you're lying you're slandering the person. So. Both are, are completely forbidden and is the greatest way to lose your light. So when you see when Allah wants to pull the plug on someone, just think in our lives when you want to see Allah taking away someone's ni'mat, they come, they do all these things and maybe they know that, oh they, that these lights can never be taken from me and I go out and, and act like a lunatic and they start writing really bad things about shaykhs. As if Allah took a big needle in their balloon and and your hasanat flowing out of you like you, you never achieved anything. 
it's like a, a sign of Divine wrath upon the person that now you are being punished by Allah because He's actually pulling. Better if you had gone somewhere forbidden and done something forbidden than to do that because you still would have kept your hasana. So that has immense reality. People who have immense lights and they achieve immense life and they set in zikr, zikrs and majlises and they have momentary lapses of cuckooness and they go out and, and do things, it's one thing because they kept their light. But to find someone whom Allah is punishing in a bad way, they actually begin to attack the shaykhs and that's the sign that all your light is being pulled out of you until you be left with nothing and your light will be given to the shaykh and returned back as his property. So that's that's the only danger that the student faces inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Are we allowed to discuss your teachings with family and relatives? Walaykum As Salaam To discuss our teaching with family and relatives is best not to. Whom Allah guides is guided and these are not knowledges that most people can even explain, more or less anyone understand. So that's a danger is when we don't really understand it and we now want to be bold enough to try to explain it to people, it's a horrific outcome in most cases. The student begin to say things that are just left and right and all over the place. My, my shaykh goes through walls, he can see here, he can see there, he's like this and then the people are like, what? What is this talking about? This is not Islam. So it, it's best that to understand that the teachings are… are are, are from the teacher. So that's why we ask that no need for you to write things, don't write articles, don't retype things, don't, don't put in things into your own words that are confusing words. It just propagate the shaykh's teachings which seems so easy but because the nafs of people just don't want to be binary code and to reach nothingness. The binary, if you… we said for years all we did was propagate the shaykh's teachings. We took it and posted it, we took it and posted it, we took a link and posted it. So when you share just the link to groups of people you think that would understand the meditation, the energy, then at least they can hear directly from the shaykh the teaching and that's it. But if a person wants to sit and start to talk about things and they don't understand it, they don't fully sort of you know comprehend it and you can't even reply to somebody who may have some you know Islamic questions. Because you're saying to the wrong person, imagine going up to an Arab Wahhabi and you know trying to talk about these realities and uh, everything he say is Sadaqallahu Lazeem, <laughs> you can't compete with his Arabic and, and what he wants to come at you with and that's why we don't argue with people. And that's why the tariqah is based on whom Allah sends, then they have a seat to enjoy and to learn. And those whom Allah doesn't send, it's, it's not for them, that Allah will send them somewhere else to learn what they need to learn at their level inshaAllah. But the, it has to be very sensitive on, on propagating the teachings, it's best just to post their teachings, post their, their uh, charity work, post all of the things that we can just post it, share the post and that's it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Beloved Mulana Shaykh Wa Alaikum As Salaam Can you please help me understand what role should we play when the Muslims mm -hmm. around the world are oppressed? Sayyidi last time you mentioned that we should not interfere with what is happening, please help me understand. <clears throat> when, when we know what time it is then we know what role we play. When Allah's qadab and anger is entering onto the earth, again for analogy, it's like a tsunami. Have you ever watched those videos of the tsunami, it's like a black water and all of a sudden the wave is 100 feet high and your mind may tell you to go down and run onto the street and shaitan is inspiring also within the emotions of people to take to the street because you take to the street as if you're going to change the course of that tsunami. And only Allah coming and say, this not even anything yet, even bigger ones are coming. You better hide yourself. This is not something you can stop, 
This is not in anyone's hand but Allah's hands. So who are you protesting for and against? The, those oppressors, they are oppressors and that's the nature of how Allah has created them. And un, until oppression has filled the earth, Sayyidina Mahdi is not going to arrive. So these are alamat and signs of the arrival, oppression, 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 all these difficulties. And then Prophet began to explain the one sitting better than the one standing. Means now when the fitna is so big, why Prophet described in that hadith? Means sit exactly where you are because your nature is to get emotional especially women because they rule through emotion and men are more of a, of a physical and you start standing up. Before you know it you're standing up and now Prophet described even standing one is better than the one who's moving because this wave of shaitan is to push you into this punishment that coming onto earth. You can't stop Allah's decree. And the reason the shaykhs are guides is they know this is a time in which Allah is sending immense punishment on the earth. So this is a time in which to hide oneself, not partake in any protests and to build your heart, build your connection. Look at the oppression and be proud of your Islam, be proud of your identity, propagate the light, propagate the love. Teach your children about their Islam, it's a time in which to have the pride of Islam and to build your love and your connection with Allah and with Sayyidina Muhammad Because if you take yourself out that tsunami will wash you away and you become in such difficulties that, that uh, is, is just unbelievable. And nothing will change because this is Allah's decree. So that's the difference between the guidance and, and people trying to run by emotion. And the shaykhs are here to warn that that emotion is all that shaitan wants to get people riled up and to head out. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you explain uh, who will be with Imam Mahdi alayhi salam? I mean, what type of habits those people will have? So inshaAllah we could be of those people inshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam inshaAllah. We, we, I think we talked about that. <clears throat> While others are describing fighting and, and all sorts of do this or that. But this is such a high level of purity that under these guides from the oceans of who means that they have the hifam Allah's hidayat. And Allah dressed them from Sifat al Wadud in which Allah loves them, Salamun Qawlun min Rabbil Raheem, and Rabbil Raheem loves them, and as a result, all of the heavens love them, and that's the secret of their juzbah and their attraction. And this muhabbat and love it brings and is a sign of the good character. So people with, with whatever they want to say they are because now everyone gives themselves big titles but they don't have good character. You give salams to them, they don't give salams back. You, you give greetings, they don't give greeting back, they're angry. Whatever the character somebody is, it's not the Muhammadan way in which Prophet greatest title was khuluqul azeem that whatever I tested you with, whatever I put you through, you are of a magnificent character that Allah Allah the Creator is describing khuluqul azeem that your character is a, a magnificent because Allah <laughs> created that reality, Allah is praising Himself <laughs> in that reality but gives to us a sign that all the signs of the greatness of Prophet is in his khuluq. So then only Allah come into our lives and teach us, compete for the best of character. Your jama should have all loving character that you have to, to push yourself towards goodness and good character, be loving and kind and loving people. 
So that's why the, the, this overwhelming ocean of reality is for muhabbat and love. Those people whom Allah decreed their character is good but maybe their qirat is off and their actions may not be as much as other people, it's sufficient and suffices them that their character will save them and Allah's Divine grace to be upon them. So it's not a matter of how many times you recite, how many times you're making rakahs and all the physical actions that you're doing. If those physical actions don't prove through your character that you're good then you're not there yet. And Sayyidina Matthew is coming when the earth is taking away everyone. Means everyone with a badness in their character, something will be coming towards them, someone will be coming towards them, everything will sort of come and Allah describes warfare as a means in which to cleanse one another. So when Allah sends people with no mercy to come after and start scrubbing you then that, that's not a good sign. That Ya Rabbi didn't want to reach to a place where people with no mercy will come to clean me. Say, you didn't want to clean yourself and have good character before that? You didn't want to relieve and stop your anger? Say, no, I want to live with it. You don't want to stop your shouting and yelling? No, I want to live with it. You want to stop cheating and, and, and doing you know bad things, hidden things? No, I want to live with it. Okay, no problem. Then there's somebody assigned to come after you and begin to cleanse you. So this is the days that we're living in, we see it on television, we see it everywhere. That's why then the awliya are advising that have the best of character, clean yourself before Allah sends others to clean you. It's not a matter of not happening, it's just a matter of when it will happen everywhere. So by the time people survive, what did they survive all of that? They survived with good character. Because they have good character, they have love in their heart and Allah hides them. As a result of hiding them they should be around and in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi And those whom have good character Allah has already defined for them many means of protection. That Ashab al kaf from the sleepers of the cave, several of them were jinn. And through the jinn powers of the Sahab al kaf they were protected for that many years of sleep. So these are realities that can't be understood, the Sahab al kaf were not just human. There are a few jinn in their cave with them and their lifespans are, are 3,000, 4,000 years. So for them 300 years is nothing, all they had to do is put their energy on and protect them as a sign from Allah So many, many realities will be opening upon this earth that are not understood but it requires the good character. And then Allah will begin to open the realities of the Budala, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtaz, Wal Akhyar, Wal Malaika, Wal Jinn and that these, these purified and blessed souls and realities to dress us, bless us and protect us from the difficulties that are coming to save us for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi So you can't be in the bubble of protection with a horrific character I guess is the point when we get to the end. So you have to go through all of this and through love Allah will assign the protection for these insan whom are weak. And as a result of that protection that safeguards them and protects them for the arrival of the Imam and upon this earth Sayyidina Mahdi salam inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can we wear iron ring or should we use any other metal for men? Yeah, well, whatever you have that is uh, nearby, you can have iron, or stainless steel, silver, inshaAllah. Um, dear Shaykh, when we become nothing, inshaAllah, will we feel anything like love or bliss? Forgive my ignorance. You cut off. Dear Shaykh, when we become nothing, inshaAllah, will we feel anything like love or bliss? Forgive my ignorance. Alhamdulillah, the picture on the screen now is uh, Hajj Amina. 
Mawlana Shaykh Nazim Sultan al-Awliya's wife, she's from the Abdal. So look to her faith and inshaAllah recite Surat al-Fatiha for her inshaAllah and that ask from her Divinely soul, heavenly soul that she keep her nazar upon us, nazar upon our family, nazar upon our children and that her, her, her madad to reach to us inshaAllah and to, to satisfaction to be dressed upon us inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. The emotions that we have now are not real anyways. We have, we have no understanding. And anytime somebody asks a question, a lot of people are frightened of, of questions because I give an answer that, that may be like revealing. Anytime we give a question, the answer is not directed to the person asking. Because other people are watching and say, oh, Shaykh just said something about you. No, 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 not at all. Because we're not looking at whose the names are. And these are questions that come to your heart, if it passes their screening that it's relevant for, for our group. The talk is based for everyone. This is not a question that only is directed to that person. That's why you see a lot more come out but it's never directed to that person. We, tariqah doesn't ever speak to one person but speak to myself. It's a direction to myself to remind me and as a result it opens up an understanding for everybody to be reminded. And the state of annihilation, its reality is of an immense Divine grace. So we have other teachings where you're just a seed. So shaykhs come into our lives and remind, you're just a seed. You, you didn't blossom into anything. Your reality is of really nothing yet. No matter how much you think, oh it's like I've come so far, I'm feeling so good and yeah but you're still a seed. And that seed is a very limited value, it's just a seed. The, the whole ocean of annihilation when they train you and teach you and pound you and push you and everything that is, is being put upon the servant is to be planted in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah That is the soil. We said it's the soil that perfects what's going to grow, it's not even the seed. If the soil is good, immensely beautiful realities will grow. So the best of realities is the Muhammadan reality. So when Allah take insan as seeds and begin to plant them, say, listen to the shaykh and plant yourself into nothingness. And when they're teaching you all these formulas of salawat and love and run to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad you're planting your identity, your ego, yourself into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So it's an analogy for us. When you're planted in the soil, what happens then to the seed? It begins to get crushed in the soil. The soil actually begin to dissolve the seed. And then from that it become like a little twig, a little branch will appear. And if you water that with love, water that with salawat, that one day will grow to be a tree, a flower, a beautiful rose bouquet, a whole rose bush with many roses on them. That's the reality that you are supposed to achieve. So if you're asking that, do you know really what love is as a seed? Have you really felt love? Or you're talking about passion and physical contact that you know minutes, uh, this, this has nothing to do with love. Love you have for your children is that's you know like a seed is only understanding love. The, the love that you have for one another is, is of like a seed. But when Allah make you into a tree means now your whole reality has a completely different understanding. The seed had absolutely no benefit from the sunshine. So again analogy, the sun like Divine Light. What does a seed understand from Divine Light? It's just cooking, it's hot. <laughs> oh, but if they make you into a, a rose bush and Allah give you a hundred flowers on your bush and every time the sun shines 
and you go into a hod, the, 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 the bush and then the flower, it goes into a hod and begins to release all sorts of fragrances, all divine fragrances and so powerful that the world is mesmerized by the fragrance of that tree, that flower and they stop. And when they stop they want to go and smell it. Some love it so much they want to pluck it and then they want to squeeze it and they want to take its fragrance home with them. That's a completely different love. The, the love in, in which you are now feeling the Divine Grace, you've been dressed by these Divine Graces. As a result you put out a fragrance within your heart because of the ishq and a love and the world is mesmerized by that love, they're attracted to that love, they want to hear and to drink from that love, it's not the same. So you haven't even begun to live as a seed, you haven't begun to feel anything as a seed. All of these are fake emotions but when the tree it feels everything, it understands the power of the soil because it's taking its nutrients from the soil, it understands the sun and it takes all its grace and its blessings from the sunlight. It even feeds off of the sunlight, it feeds off of the below, means from the mulk and malakut it's achieving what it has to achieve and senses everything. So we pray that Allah dress us and bless us and give us the reality of our senses, the reality of ishq and love, the reality of good character, the rea reality of the immensity of what Allah We haven't even begun to see. What you see is, is but an illusion. When Allah opened for the servant, what eyes have not seen opens Divinely Presence, open the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad open the presence of your here to hear what others have not heard in that presence, to open the sense of what is that, that presence smell like, feel like and energized like and to feel it with all senses is an ishq and muhabbat that cannot be understood nor can you understand it from the physical realm. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.